My name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Ian Robinson. And we're taking a look at some of the new features in After Effects CS 5.5. And of course, one of the things I did want to point out to you is there is a ton of new stuff. Some of it's little stuff, but sometimes little things make a big difference. Yeah, most definitely, like time code, which we're actually going to jump right into. Yeah, time code is really, really useful. And if you're an experienced After Effects designer, you might not be used to using time code. You know, here's a typical workflow for the rest of the post-production people, right? <laughs> like producers in the, you know, sitting in the edit suite, they look at a clip, say, oh, this looks really good, but you know, we'd like to paint out these things here and uh, have them stabilize the shot from this point to this point. You get all these great notes with time code and in After Effects CS5 or earlier, you know, what would happen? Yeah, I, I, well, first off, I'd laugh. Right. <laughs> and then um, I, I'd end up with this clip and I'd literally have to scroll through and see if there were some kind of visual cues because literally, unless you had a burn in, there was no way of actually comparing what the notes were versus what I actually had because I had this little QuickTime file that pertained to absolutely nothing as far as time code was concerned. Yeah, all you had was sort of like the running counter and that can get a little bit rough. But now the good news is, is that time code is fully supported. You could use it to set up your compositions, you yeah. could render out with it. Full support for time code across the board, which just moves After Effects into that much more of a great production tool. So we got a bunch of clips here and I'm just gonna grab a clip and drag it down. This is a, this particular material here is DVC Pro HD. Right. And I'm going to drag that on the new comp icon. And immediately, if you pay attention, you'll see a, a big change right down there in the composition window. That's right. Yeah, I mean, if you want to look at it down here, right there at the start where uh, your current time indicator is set. Yeah. Notice um, we're right at the start of the comp. And it says 40 seconds. Say? Yeah, 40 <laughs> seconds. Uh, OK, where did that come from? Right. If, if you're used to thinking of this as sort of duration, I'd be like, wait a minute, my comp's all screwed up. No, you know, if you go to the composition settings, you'll see that it's actually using the time code from the starting time code of the clip. So this particular clip was 3 hours, 22 minutes, 40 seconds. Yeah and you know, 0.04, so four frames. So you know, it's starting this composition right at the same time code as the actual clip. So if we were to render out, it would generate time code that would match if they wanted to cut this back into the show. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, honestly, as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking to myself, all those times where you know, you're the one man band, yeah. and you had to do the shoot and the editing and the graphics and all that stuff, this is just one of those great things where if you're actually on the shoot and you know you got that shot at you know, three hours, 22 minutes, yeah. boom, you just go right there and it's ready to go. It's amazing. Yeah, and if we look at the clip, if we go ahead and, and right click and choose to interpret that footage, and we look at that, you'll see that you actually have built-in time code yeah. for the file, or you can actually override the time code if you needed to, if you had to assign time code. So maybe you've got a, a clip and it's computer generated media that you're meaning to key in over live action footage. Yeah. Well, you could put the same starting time code to line up with that first frame of video. And then when you hand it back off to maybe the editor, they can go, oh, this goes exactly here in the timeline. Yeah, no, that's just, it's gonna make talking between departments so much easier. Yeah, and, and so what's important here, you know, as we go through, like this particular clip doesn't have time code. Like if we look at this, this was shot on a DSLR. And so obviously when we call it up, it's going to say zero, 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 zero. That's right. But you can override that with whatever time code you need if you had to. But as we go through and we look at other types of clips, you'll see there is actually time code and it's going to be there. So obviously when it comes to time code, we've shown that it's there. You got some decisions to make because when you want to render out of After Effects, you could send time code with it as well. Right, right. And that, of course, is going to be based on the time code settings within your composition as opposed to each individual layer. Right, because it'd get pretty confused if you had six layers in the comp, they all had their own time code. Right. You know, which one do I use? <laughs> well, the good news here is there's sort of two ways of doing this. You can always go under your manual composition settings and set your starting time code for the comp. That's fine. Uh, what I would say, though, is probably the easier way is select the shot whose time code you want to use. Mm -hmm. And when you drag that on the new comp icon, you'll see that that actually lines up. And if we look at the composition settings, it's pulled it down and it's loaded the time code from the original source clip. Yeah, that makes it really, really easy. So if we wanted this time code to be included with the final render, do I have to do anything special? 
No, you just have to make sure that you render it to at least a QuickTime or MPEG-2 or some other format that definitely supports timecode. Yeah, which is pretty simple. So as long as you're going to a movie type format where timecode is a supported track, it'll carry that across. So there's no extra modules to change in the output module. It'll use that generated timecode. So a lot of flexibility here. I think we're sort of seeing a new age for collaboration between yeah. motion graphics folks and special effects folks and the rest of production. That's right. I imagine that everybody on the same page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no guessing, <laughs> no. Could you give me more notes? Because it, it used to be so embarrassing. You would like call up and like, oh, well, there was a problem with the time code track. Was that the third take or the second take you want me to use? You know, and you just play these games and, and finally we were there. Or we'd have to jump over to Premiere and look at it. Right, right. Jump back. Reference machines. Yeah, it's just bad. Time code's there. <laughs> it's fixed. We'll just call the past the past and welcome to the future. Amen.